Okay, just before we get into this one, uh, another couple of stickers. Um, here's two from Grant over at number 51 Creations. Thank you, Grant. And there's one from Megan at Wood Turning by ME. Links below, of course. And there's another link below for anyone who missed the invade by the beard, Rich. Um, if you're interested in this shop tour or find, a bit, find out a bit more about me, you can uh, just click the link below. Now, let's get on with this video. Right then. This video, we're going to try something different. I'm going to colour something. Well, not really. I'm going to ebonise something. Right, I've seen this technique, and uh, this is, let's have a go at that. It relies on the wood you're using being high in tannin. And uh, I have Spanish chestnut, which is the highest tannin content I've ever worked with wood. Right, now, what you need is some white vinegar, some werewolf, right, the lightest you can get, treble or quadruple O or something they call it, right, a jar, a clean jar, the lid of the jar with loads of holes in it, because apparently this produces gases, right, the first thing you gotta do is werewolf when it comes it has an oily substance on it to stop it rusting you need to wash it what i did was i got really hot water and washing up liquid and i washed it like mad and then i uh, rinsed it out in cold water right you get your werewolf shove it into the jar right uh, i believe this stuff is called iron acetate Get your white vinegar. Fill up your jar with white vinegar. Right. And you basically leave it there for a couple of weeks. Right. So I'm actually filming this a couple of weeks before I do the actual video. Right, and you end up with this uh, werewolf floating on white vinegar basically um apparently you can do this with wood that isn't really high in tannin but what you need to do is make up another solution of um tea really really strong tea I mean, for those in the states who don't drink tea i believe what you're looking for over there is called english breakfast tea right uh, now, when I say really strong, I mean really strong. Um, kind of 10 tea bags to a cup strong. Right? And you, you let it, yet again, you make it and you leave it there for days to make sure it gets really high in tannin, right? And then you paint that on first and then paint this stuff on. Uh, that's apparently supposed to work, but I'm not going to be doing that because of the wood I'll be using is really high in tannin anyway. Right, so we did that sitting on the shelf here for a couple of weeks and when I come back to it the steel wool is supposed to have been dissolved and I end up with this iron acetate stuff and it paints on and turns the wood black. So we'll try that and see what happens. So I'll see you on this one in a few weeks time. Right then, it's been a few weeks, it's actually been about four weeks, so I just got stuck into all this stuff. Right, and it's been sitting there, and you can see the colour it's gone, it's gone all cloudy. Now what I have to do is strain the solids out of it. So, you get to that. Let's check that there is a kind of a lump of werewolf it's kind of a lump of werewolf left inside of it make sure all the solutions gone out of that and we will get that out of the workshop because i don't fancy the whole place smelling like a vinegar right now strain the solids out i'm just going to strain it through an old t-shirt into another jar
Right. All the solids are finally drained out of it. And what we have left is just the iron acetate. Right. Let's stick a lid on that for the moment. Right, now let's get to the bowl we're using. Right then, I have a Spanish chestnut rough torn bowl on here. Uh, it got a crack in it while it was drying. But I'll torn it down a bit before I fill that crack. And uh, we go from there. Right, first thing I want to do is round it up. So I gotta do the edge first to make sure I get these clean entries in. Right. Yeah, it looks alright. Right, I've already reshaped the tenon on it. Uh, it doesn't fit the new truck because it's too small, so I had to go back to using the, uh, the fox, as I said, the ground chokes. So. Make sure I'm getting a cut all the way. I am. Right, now I'm going to round over this side. Sometimes noticed with Spanish chestnut after it comes out of the kiln is it's uh, quite dusty and it tears out really bad sometimes. I'm just trying to get an edge that I'm cutting all the way around and this ball may be shorter than I think. See that? Big huge chip out there. I'm going to take that down more. Yeah, we're down below that broken out part now. Right, now we go back to shape this. We're getting the rough shape on the outside. I actually want to get the outside of this um, fully shaped and sanded. Now I'm going to take that off and I'm going to do something about that crack. I'm done. So cold in the workshop that my super thin CA is no longer super thin. It's my like medium. It's been below freezing here for every night for the past few nights. Well, nearly a week, I suppose. So my super thin is not super thin anymore. I'm actually putting on a heater here beside me to try and 
thin it down. Or at least make it go back to super thin. Should be drying out, so we continue on shaping this. Okay, we're going to clean cut all down low. I'm just going to cut that out now. So I got a spot there. It's a lot more warped than I thought it was. And there's that crack out there opening up again. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna take this down further, down down to about there probably. Because that is chipping out badly at the top. That has to have got it. Yes, it has. Right. Okay, so we've two cracks. We've one on that side. We've one on that side. Right. Now I'm going to take that down to get rid of that big chip that's out there. So to be fair, no Simpson. Uh, killing quality for size. Treat those cracks properly this time. But I'm going to heat that CA up a bit more. Right, so I'm going to treat those cracks and I'll be back in a Okay. The longer wing gives me the better chance of getting the wispy shavings and a much smoother cut. Because it's, as I said before, it's almost like using a straight blade on it. more severe cut getting that bump out I'm using more of the tip here rather than the long blade on the side Use the long blade on the side for more of a finished cut. Yeah, that's better. Now I'm back to the long blade on the side. Yeah, I 
like that shape. Right. Now we'll just sand that and then go on to the next part which is ebonizing it. And I'll be back for that. Right then, we're sanded down to 240. Now we'll see what effect this stuff has. I've protected the bed of the lead just in case. Right. Now let's have a look see what this does. Does it turn the wood black? Whoa. Very quickly. I don't know if it's going to turn where I have the CA black. It is really reacting with the very, very high tannin content in this wood. That I am actually surprised that I didn't think it would go that black. Obviously when it dries off it will probably go door. But I will uh, see there's that chip again. So this ball will be going down smaller. But um, I was planning to cut the rim anyway to make it a clean line there. Uh, mm. I was not expecting that much of a reaction. I was expecting a reaction, but not that much. It's definitely going to be a case of just let that dry in. And then uh, I'll probably have to denib it with 240 again. And then. Uh, Give it a second coat. Right, so we leave that to dry. But uh, yeah, that really works. And you can still see the grain through it, which is nice. Right, we'll let that dry and we'll come back. That's probably going to take a couple of hours to dry, I'd say. Because as I said, it is freezing here at the moment. So we'll let that dry and uh, Dean it and probably put a second coat. So I'll be back for that. Right, that's dry. Uh, I would denib it and then um, give it a second coat. Oh, we miss spinning the one in Just quick denib. stayed solid. I've seen uh, a few demos of this on YouTube but I'm gonna try what I'm actually gonna try and do is I'm gonna use Yorkshire grit after it. Right I'll denib it again after I do this coat and then uh, well let it dry and then I'm gonna use Yorkshire grit and see what happens. See if this makes it any blacker. Second coat. Well, I would be surprised if it does. I don't think you would probably get blacker than that. I'm actually uh, quite stunned at what this has actually done.
Yeah, that's where the CA is. It hasn't touched there at all. I didn't think it would. Well, for a first time experiment, this is not bad at all. That's right, and that'll be it for coats of that. Right, let's we'll see what comes out of that. So, as I said, I'm gonna let that dry again for another couple of hours, and we'll see what happens. I'm gonna say that. Right, it's been a few hours and uh, it's very late but I just couldn't resist seeing what happened to this so I'm going to put some sanding sailor on it right, it has dulled down a bit but the colour looks pretty smooth so I'm going to stick some sanding sailor on it just to see what happens We go from there. Alright, let's have a look and see. Put the sand and sail around, we can be a clue, we can use a clue anyway, to how it's going to look when it's done. Wow, that really is black. seen as I said I've seen some um, demos of this stuff being done on YouTube but I've never actually seen anybody finish anything so I honestly have no idea how this stuff takes a finish but we'll find out I can't wait to see what uh, Yorks are great dust wood. But if that is anything to go by on how this ball is going to finish, that is amazing. Still visible through it. That's just cool. That's some CA down there, obviously. That's CA there. That's a bit of interest. Well, I'd probably prefer if it wasn't there. Right. Leave that spinning to dry. Let's see what happens. Right. That's dry. Now. Let's see just how shiny we can make this. It's a picture of the grid, hasn't it? I'd say it probably lit some of the colour. Maybe. Probably see my breath. So cold it is out here. As I said, it's quite late, but I just couldn't resist finding out. Um, if 
what you're actually going to do to this. This have picked up a slight warp. Yeah, it is picking up some of the colour. It almost looks like boot polish. Right, I'm gonna clean it up and see how that went. Fresh piece of towel. There'll be no doubt if it's clean or not. Because the towel's black. Oh, I can see my reflection in it. So it's obviously doing something. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. You can see if I can see the reflection in my hand in it. I don't know if this black is the colour coming off or if it's the oxygen grid still coming off. See? I'll be leaving this overnight to dry though. To make sure the oxygen grid is well gone off because as I said it's very cold. And I uh I want to make sure this is well gone off before I put wax in it.
Here there, let's see. Not much black coming out now. Okay, I'd say we're probably good at that. Let's have a look see. Oh man. Right, still see stripes of your finger in that. See them there? Further my finger down. So it's not all off. Stuff like that you gotta watch for. I hope the camera's picking it up because you can still see my fingerprints in that, which means there's still Yorkshire grit left in that. So that has to come off. Or it won't finish properly. So that's the only thing now. So the coal might be affecting it. It's not coming out clean. But, uh, yes, I am liking this a lot. So what I'll do is I'll leave that overnight until it gets a bit warmer, hopefully. And uh, I'll clean it again before I put any wax near it. But, uh, yes, that really does look good. Right, so I'll leave that to dry, and uh, I'll be back for the next night. Alright, we're at 600. Gonna fill those cracks and we'll be right back. Those cracks are sorted on the rim. I'll have to wait to sort the inside when I uh, actually get there. You know, just start hollowing the shell. I think this bottle may move a bit when I'm hollowing it. There's a lot more internal cracks in this. 
than I thought that was. So I'm going to have to pull it off and fill it in. Right, so as you see, the bowl has picked up a lot of warp. Um, I can't actually use the nickel brake scraper out here because it's so warped. Uh, but uh, it'll just means more sanding or fun. Right, so um, I'll be back when I do that. Right, and we're back. Oh, it's been. Sand at the 240, the usual. Sand at the 240, your secret, I'm just saying. And while I was doing it, I had a change of heart about the bottom. What I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm actually not gonna ebonize the bottom. I'm gonna show you why now. See that? That is quite pretty there. And I think that would be nice to show on the bottom. So, uh, we flip this around and we'll get the bottom done. We'll get this bowl finished. Alright, so as I said, I've actually changed my mind about ebonizing the bottom. So uh, I've waxed the black part. And it's not bad at all. I probably need another buffing now. Because this. It's blooming every now and again. Up it and it comes off. Right, so now we'll get the bottom of this done. And I'll get the smaller bell guards to do this. Let's check for height. Yeah, we're good. Okay, let's get moving. Right, that's 500. the edge here, get clean edge in it. Right. Just a little cut there, and 
there, as I said, it got a, the ball picked up a warp. So I'm going to check how clean of a cut I'm getting. So I can hear a bump it's there. Okay. And we're back, just bumping out the base. Right. This lovely figure just there. I'm glad I actually I'm actually glad I didn't ebonize the bottom of this. This lovely figure just there. And there. That would have all been hidden if I'd have ebonized it. I'm actually quite glad I went for the basin style ball as well because that would have, if I'd have brought it down here and brought a Rita scoop into it, all of that would have been hidden. That's lovely, just there. Right, then we'll take it off and I'll get rid of that little nub. And then uh, it's done, finally. Uh, so I'll be back then. Okay, and there we have it. An ebonized bowl of Spanish chestnut. The ebonizing oops, there's a bit of dust on it there. The ebonizing turned out quite alright, I think. The base turned out pretty good as well. So uh hope you enjoyed that one. And if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel it'd be much appreciated i'll put up some pictures of it at the end because the lighting in here isn't great and i'll uh, see you in the next one